Thank you. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, please. You are loud and clear. Can you hear you? So once again, um, I, I welcome all of you to our maiden um, alumni lecture series. It is my greatest um, honor to um, MC this maiden edition of the lecture series. We have several great individuals here, including all of your individual selves that are joining this program. I would like to remind all of us that we, we we are to register to this program so that at the end of the program, we can be able to receive certificates um, to our participation. Um, the links have been sent to our various alumni platforms. Um, I believe it will be um, sent here as well, and then you can proceed to register if you've not already done so. I would like to say a special welcome to our vice president in the person of Mr. Noah Charles Okaija. Mr. Noah, you are very welcome. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would like to um, invite our Vice President, Mr. Ukaija, who will have the task of giving us a welcome message to this lecture series. Mr. Ukaija, you can please have the platform. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. MC, and um, good evening to all of you. Um, um, and I welcome all of you to the maiden edition of the alumni lecture series. Um, I think um, when we came into office, we decided that um, we will create a lot of opportunities for members um, such that these alumni shouldn't be just um, a group that uh, will only focus on some aspects of welfare and issues that have to do with entertainment and others, but we'll be able to create the conducive environment for members to network, for members to also gain knowledge, um, and especially to be able to advance in whatever that they do. Uh, and so that gave birth to the lecture series, uh, such that we have planned that um, uh, with time or from time to time, we will come up with some topics that are very uh, critical um, so that we can be able to have these lectures for members to be able to gain more knowledge in doing business and other aspects of life. You agree with me that um, gone were the days where uh, most people were comfortable in their comfort zones uh, because competition uh, in those times were not that uh, as high as we find it today. But in our time, we've realized that uh, businesses have become very competitive. And so you can no longer uh, be in your comfort zone and that you need to be able to always be a step ahead of the others. Um, sometimes it, it will amaze you that you go to a particular area and you see one particular business. Uh, for example, um, the business that mostly now uh, is spreading fast is a grocery or what we call provision shop. So you go to a street and then you find about five different provision shops all almost close to each other. It first starts with just one shop and then once people see that that business is thriving, the another person comes to open a shop nearby. And then another person opens a shop nearby. Another person also opens. So by the time I realize that stretch of street is flooded with people that offer the same business. Now, the question you should ask yourself is, how can all of them stay in business? How can all of them have uh, the share of the 
market. And then you can also ask yourself that the pioneers of those businesses on the streets, how do they survive the competition that they find themselves? And so sometimes uh, it requires one to think beyond the box. It requires one to come up with new strategies to be able to overcome some of these challenges and to stay uh, on top or ahead of the business. This is what most people have failed to do. And uh, they started a concept in business, but uh, others who did not contribute to that knowledge or innovation have rather come to take over. For example, um, or an example I can give is standard water. We all knew that when, um, in time past, when we were growing up, uh, uh, what we called ice water was being sold in some pots where they add some ice cube to it. And then when you order for the ice water, they take a cup and fetch the ice water for you and give it to you. Then it came to a point where there were some health issues. So because of the health issues, um, they, they wanted to ban the sale of ice water in those pots. And so some people came up with an innovation and then began to tie the water in a rubber and then they would refrigerate it and sell. And so you buy that water, that was what, um, that was what uh, the, the one that has been sold in port was able to migrate into. Uh, now, at a point in time, somebody decided that he would come up with a new uh, concept by bagging the water in a more acceptable um, package where it will eliminate a lot of the human hands that has to do with the um, the filling of the water because in times where they have to fill the water, people will have to use their bare hands to fill those things and then they are health risks. So someone came up with a concept, began to bag the water and that is standard water. You know, they brought the concept. Now, very, um, uh, the tragedy is that now standard water has been kicked out of the business by people who did not invest anything in bringing out those innovative uh, uh, um, ideas. So what could our standard water do to still keep uh, to keep to still be on top of the uh, industry or the competition? I think all boils down to innovation and their inability to be able to think deeper and come up with strategies. And so let us all embrace these um, programs that we have rolled out so that at least we can learn a lot from, from it. Um, and those that have their businesses will be able to manage their businesses more efficiently. And those that have plans of now going into business will, will, also, will also be able to learn skills and then to be able to launch very well into the business enterprise that they want to go. So I welcome all of you this evening. And uh, I will believe, I will, Played with all of us that we milk our microphones, and then uh, when it is time for questions, the microphones will be or can be unmuted, and then we can ask our questions. So thank I thank all of you, and um, I believe that we will enjoy this session. At this juncture, I will hand over back to the MC to continue the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Mr. Noah, for your welcome message. Indeed, times are changing. It requires us to learn new skills so that we can evolve our businesses in order to compete on the market. Thank you so much, Mr. Okaijan. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would like to to all of us uh, alumni executives. Um, when I mention your name, you, you can say hi to us um, for us to acknowledge you. For the president, we have Dr. David King Boyce. Yeah, hi. Good. And for um, the have a good, good evening. Thank you, thank you for that. For the vice president, we have Mr. Noah 
Charles Ukaija. Hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then secretary, we have Mrs. Josephine Kafui Tete. Mrs. Josephine, is she here? She's outside the country, but she'll be joining us, yeah. Oh, great, great, great. Thank you, uh, beloved president. Um, following her, it's a financial controller, and she is Miss Grace Essel. As organizer, we have Mr. Joseph Adani. As executive member, we have Mr. Atta Chumesi Daboni. And another executive member, Mr. Joseph Jato. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the names to yes. our executives. Um, brothers and sisters, it's now time for me to do the all important, which is to introduce to us our speaker of the day. Now, um, before I do that, I would like to give a little profile of our speaker of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged to have for our maiden lecture series Mr. David King Boysen to speak to us. Now, Mr. David King Boysen is the senior lecturer and head of his and head of the department of procurement, logistic, and supply chain management at GCTU. He is the chairman of Ethics Review Committee of the NHIS. He is also the chairman of the Ethics Review Board of Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders. He is also the track chair for Academy of African Business Development, AABD. He is currently the alumni president of MUCG. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome to us Mr. Dr. David King Boyson. Doctor, you are welcome. Thank you, sir. Um, and have a good evening. Members, um, I want to greet you, and I think I have the honor to do this seminar series. Uh, first of all, let me just thank my outstanding executives for a young man's job, for holding the fort up to this time and for working hard to, in order that we're able to come out with this, these programs. So executives, thank you so much for the support. So this evening, I'm gonna take you through a short journey in the next 45 minutes, and we'll be talking about critical thinking, but let me first ask whether the Dean of Student Affairs is on the call, uh, Mr. Robert Mensa, if you're on the call, can you unmute and just say hi? I'm told that the Vice Chancellor has also been invited to this meeting. So if you are here, Mr. Robert Mensa, let us know. And I know in the course of the discussion, the Vice, uh, the Vice Chancellor uh, might even uh, join the meeting. And this to tell you how supportive they are uh, with what we are doing. We've given um, some a link for you to register. The registration is not just for the participation for, of, of this training, but that we could issue uh, certificates to, to you after the, uh, the uh, seminar so that it can help you with, uh, we thought of doing certificate of participation but we'll change it to certificates of training. And let me also indicate that these trainings are something that 
I do as part of my consultancy and the fees I charge are very high. So let's just take advantage of it and then see how it can help us. I want to start from the intro my vice president gave. And I think that you saw he is an entrepreneur. So he understands some of these things very, very well. And he was telling us how some businesses were able to transition. Shin, I think somebody wants to record. Um, okay. So how businesses are able to transition from where they are, I mean, to be able to upscale to the next level. Now, my main objective today, tonight, is to just spark some sort of a, a discussion. Today is not just to solve the problem or imbibe in you that act of critical thinking, but just to start a certain discussion or conversation so that we'll continue on to discuss if there's a need for us to do other seminars on it, we can take it up there because 45 minutes cannot address this issue of critical think thinking. Now, the main objective is to ensure that we solve problems in a holistic, I mean, manner. And a hol hol holistic manner means that we are thinking outside the box. Today, business tycoons and uh, top level management are even thinking that there is no box. But let's start and assume that there is a box. And it all, only means that we are going the extra mile and to be able to solve the everyday problems in a manner that has not been done before so that we can reduce costs and also maximize what? Revenue. So I just want to have some few definition about the concept of critical thinking. Now, critical thinking is the art of thinking in, this, uh, in, in a manner that helps the person to make reasoned judgments that are logical, that they are well touched out. And it's a way of thinking in which you don't simply accept all arguments and conclusions that you are exposed to, but rather have an attitude involving questioning such arguments and conclusions. I know we'll have this thought that our culture doesn't allow us to question things, but that's what critical thinking is about. And critical thinking is the ability to think clearly, clearly and rationally, clearly and rationally about what to do or what to believe. And it includes the ability to engage in reflective and independent thinking. Underline, reflective and independent thinking. For most of us, we think that if we must do something, we will need somebody's confirmation to know that what we are doing is right. But you ask yourself, the person you are seeking for that confirmation, how is he able to also ensure that what he's telling you is the right thing? It means that the person is an independent thinker. So at the end of this class, or seminar, we should be able to understand why we should be independent what thinker, uh, thinkers, and even how to think. Someone with critical thinking skills is able to do the following. Understand the logical connections between ideas. Logical connections between ideas. And we are saying that the art of critical thinking in business involves the ability to analyze and evaluate information, arguments, and evidence in a logical and systematic manner to make informed decisions and solve not easy problems, but complex what problems. And it is the process that goes beyond simply accepting or rejecting ideas and requires individual to examine and challenge assumptions, consider different perspectives, 
and arrive at a well-reasoned, well-reasoned conclusions. And these are very, very big, I mean, <laughs> words and, 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 and phrases that I'm, I'm using. Because when we are saying that it goes beyond simply accepting and then rejecting ideas, and it requires individual, individual to examine and, and challenge, examine and challenge the status quo, challenge the assumptions, and consider different perspectives and arrive at a well-reasoned what conclusion. So we set a premise for what critical thinking. So somebody who thinks critically doesn't do the normal itineraries for the day. The, the to do business that we do already, but he does reflective and independent thinking. What we need to know, as a matter of fact, is that the very powerful asset that we have as, as individual is our mind. That is a very powerful asset that we have. And I don't know if there's anyone here who doesn't have one. Let me, let me put it in a, a very, I mean, <clears throat> proper perspective. Everyone has a brain. And it is the powerful tool or asset that we all have. So my, 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 my argument is this. In business or in the environment, we possess the same information. And we compute, we compete with, we compete on the same market. We use the same resources. So guess what? What is the difference? If we are in the same environment, we have the asset, which is the brain. We possess the same information. We compete on the same market. We use the same resources. The question is, what is the difference? And let me tell you. So we generate, what we generate out of the information that we have and how we compete on the same market and how we use the resources makes the difference. So let me give you an example. We find ourselves on the Zoom. We are connected, isn't it? We're connected to the Zoom. So we are all on this platform. But somebody is maximizing or optimizing the connectivity of the Zoom. Someone is also here who has the same resource, has the internet, but the point is that he cannot hear. Others are hearing, but they are also doing other things, using the Zoom for other things, because we all have the Zoom. And if we were to pay, we all pay. If it, this, this presentation was by an admission for you to pay a fee, we've all paid. So what we generate out of the information and how we compete on the same market and how we use the resources makes what the difference. So to creatively go out of the box is not a luxury. It is not but a necessity for us and as our dignity as human beings. This is very, very powerful. To creatively go out, to think outside the box, it's not a luxury, but the necessity for us and as our dignity as human beings. In other words, if we think less, of what I have just said, then we disdignify ourselves or we sell less of ourselves. Because if you're a Bible student or you're a Quran student, you know that the, the, the God who created us created us in his image. So we look like God. 
we function like him. The reason is that everything you see under this earth, from the two pick to the aeroplane or to the skyscrapers, everything was created from this brain that has been given to us as assets. And we all have the brain. Everyone has it. So to think less what we have been given really bring us, it, it makes us look or fall short or become less of a human being. Because actually, we need to be functioning at that level. So we are saying that it is no luxury to be a critical thinker. Because that is the level that we should function as human beings. So which box are we talking about? Which box are we talking about? <clears throat> the box is not our mind. We cannot think out of our mind. But what is the box? So the box is the boundary within our mind. The boundary between what we know and what we haven't thought of or thought about. And for example, education creates boundaries for us. Because anytime we want to do something, we need a certain format or standard. So that becomes a boundary. Without that, we cannot do what we are doing. The environment we live in there are rules and regulations, there are customs, there are norms that restrict us. So we are not able to go beyond that boundary. Because I've been through everything. No, we're cleaning. Oh, we're cleaning. So we are not able to go beyond that boundary. Family has their own structure. To the extent that in a family, when they are all lawyers, they decide to do something else, it becomes a boundary. They say, no, you must be a lawyer. Workplace have standard operating procedures, and you have to work by them. And theories, they all create this boundary. But the interesting thing here is that fellow alumni, those who go outside the box, who defy the assumption, who defy the degradational structure, who defy the environment, who defy the family structure, who defy workplace procedures, who defy theory, when they are able to create something and it becomes successful, that thing they have created now also becomes what a boundary that people follow and they do not want to go outside. So nobody knows what is outside the box. Nobody knows. Because we don't even, we have not even experienced that. We have not even experienced that before. So how do we go outside the box? What are the mechanisms? Do we need to wait for an apple to fall on our next, or are there specific rules to work with? So reality is out there for us to perceive. So we have a lot of ideas in our convergent information. And when I say convergent information, adding information that is known to another information that is known, it converge, it makes sense. And those are the dominant ideas. So whenever we need to think about something, we have an idea. There has to be an idea. So that idea on how things should be becomes our what? Convergent information. And that gives sets the requirement for us. So we're able to tell you that if you want to do this, you have to do A, B, C, and then get there. If you want to start a business, you have to start it this way because there are rules that has been created. There are specifications. 
and we should know how the, th the things are because that is how they have been. And anytime you have, you want to go beyond that, then it means that you are defined. You are going outside the box. Guys, guess what? Guess, uh, guess what? To think outside the box, we need to add something little. Something which goes beyond the convergence information. Something wrong. It is absurd. It doesn't make sense. Apparently, it is not relevant. Something that takes us far. We need to add something. And that is divergent information. Information that diverge, it doesn't converge. I can tell you from Rob, uh, I mean Albert Einstein to any new inventor today we have or we have ever experienced, what they did is that they added something little that stretched their dreams to the next level. Something that did not make sense. And I can give you a, a number of examples. Somebody used this car tie that we've been using, that we dispose, use it for furniture. But we know that by standard knowledge, we get furniture from trees. So he added something extra, something that goes beyond the convention. If I believe the first time he was doing, somebody might have told the guy that you are going crazy. It doesn't make sense because there are no rules. They've not seen it before. But because the guy was daring to do it, now when he did it and it worked out, now that thing became a new innovation. And then now people now begin to follow. Okay? So we live in a space where people are quick to copy but are not thinkers. We need more thinkers to be able to move to the next level. We need divergent information to cross the borders within our mind from what we know to what we have not thought about yet. We need divergent information to do that. And this is an essential mechanism that is necessary to take us to a place where we really don't know where we are going. But there is a temptation of returning back to the box. Because anytime you, you, are, you are outside the box, no one wants to get close to you because they see you as a crazy person. You are going out of the natural. You are going out of something that we do not even understand. We've not seen it before. So we call those people as they are long thinkers, critical thinkers. Those who think outside the box, they are not deep thinkers. A deep thinker uh, thinks inside the box and goes deep into the box. A long thinker goes outside the box and goes far away. And he doesn't even know what he's doing, but he's allowing the mind creatively without any requirement, without any restrictions, to come out with something new, something innovative. It has never happened before, but he's the first person to think about it. So we call those people long thinkers. So long thinking, something that takes us far. And if you see this fountain, something, just imagine that you are standing where this fountain is and you empty yourself and the mind is blank and you begin to imagine there are things that will come to your thoughts. So we, can, so we can use association of ideas and combination of ideas, extraction of principles and application of those principles in areas that has never been used before. The car ties, that those ones that are, they've disposed of were never used, they had never used it before to, I mean, create furniture. We have never seen that they've used plastic to create blocks. It has never happened before. When COVID came, some people used the sensor that we've been using for our remote uh, television, the same sensor that we've been using for uh, our vehicles, to spark our vehicles, to open our gates. They were using the same sensor, okay, for, I mean, to design 
something that we could not touch because we're not supposed to touch. So you can wash your hand without turning the tap. So the same ideas has been used in a way that has never the same principle that has never been applied in that way before. And as a matter of fact, we need to be open-minded. We need to look for alternatives and not for correct answers. And those of you who have taught before, I, never, I always tell you <coughs> that in the classroom, what I'm looking for is not right or wrong answer. What I'm looking for is someone who is consistently inconsistent or inconsistently consistent that I know that the guy is a logical thinker. But somebody can, if somebody can be inconsistently consistent over time, then that guy, that person is, I mean, something else. So what is the value of the idea outside the box? Sometimes it's worthless. Sometimes we think it doesn't make sense. Maybe it doesn't. Because sometimes we are tempted to come back to the box. Say, what if it doesn't work? What if what I'm saying doesn't work? Can you imagine that Carl Benz, the guy who, who we are told by history, developed the first car? In fact, when he moved the car, the car was to go forward. Do you know what happened? It came reverse. And that was what introduced that idea that a car can also go back. But the original idea was to go forward. So in critical thinking, there is nothing like mistake. Because any mistake is a new invention because it has never happened before. But there's always a temptation not to, not to go on that tangent. And we are confined in, in, our, in our small space. Okay? So <clears throat> those who are critical thinkers, who go outside the box, most of the, the time, face challenges. Sometimes we even neglect them. We don't want to see them. And then they are alone. But if they stand firm and they are resolute and they succeed, then what they were doing that was supposed to be very dangerous and, and, and very a no-go area now become the standard. So when these guys started using type of furniture, now a number of people are doing the same business. Copy and paste. Right? So we are social animals. We live in an environment, so to think outside the box becomes an issue. Because there are rules in an organization, there are regulations and all that. Let me just tell you a short story. There was this guy in one of the companies that I, I trained, and he told me the story. Now, they had a finance, okay? What they do is that um, they, they do shea butter. They cut it into blocks and then they, they export. So <clears throat> this finance was not working. And then they called the, the, the whites, they came. In fact, they asked them to do something online, they could not. The white man came, checked everything. It was, in fact, an ele ele electric box that, like a controller box, that was, was, was creating the problem. They put another controller box on, it didn't work. So whilst they were worrying, uh, where, where they were worried and outside and all that, this guy has not been to school. But he's an electrician. Those guys that um, did electronics, wayside guys. So the guy sat down whilst they were outside and was thinking. And something came to his mind. And he said that, okay, then let me try. He was afraid. But the point was that they wanted a solution. And see, when there is... There, we want solutions to a problem. We do not care which rank you find yourself. Take note. We do not care. For instance, if a doctor sees a patient dying and the doctor has done everything and nothing works, the, worst, the best they could do is that you guys can go and pray. At, this, at that level, they need solutions. So whatever you bring up should work. So this guy, what he did was that the connection of the circuit 
was in 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 series. So he changed it to parallel connection and then fix it. They were all outside when they heard that the finance had started again. And then when they came, they just had to carry him and they were giving him funds and all that. But what did this guy do? He defied the odds. The odd was the fact that the thing was connected in series. But he thought that if it is changed in parallel, it could work. Let me tell you, what he did, yeah. what the guy did, has really created a huge impact that the manufacturers are now connecting those, I mean, box in parallel connection rather than series. Because the guy went outside the box, not knowing all this while the, 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 the finance runs for some number of hours and then it cuts. It was due to this and every day they have to fly a white man to come to solve the problem. This guy defied the rule and today it has become what the standard. So this is the, the rubber I'm talking about. It has been turned into what? Blocks. These are plastics turned into box, right, blocks. These plastics were supposed to be disposed of. But this guy thought that, why can't we apply this in a manner that has not been tested? Outside the box. The normal thing is to use what? The cement. Okay? And sand. And come out with what? The blocks. Now, we are not using cement and, and sand. We are using plastic. This is what I spoke about. The tire is now being used for furniture. And look at what they are using it for. Okay, other toy cars. So female furniture maker meets the talented lady turning old ties into unique wall hangings. What has she done? She's created a business. She is, she's been able to look at what? The environment and solve a problem. That's what she's done. This was the guy I talked about, the coronavirus, I mean, <clears throat> time when this guy decided that we were not having fiscal contact. So why can't we use the same remote sensor technology and apply it here and it worked. In fact, they use solar in addition and it worked. Okay. Now, let me, let me just tell you this. I've done 28 minutes. I'll be finishing and I'll leave for questions. Most of us are living an autopilot life. And when I say autopilot, we wake up in the morning, we brush our teeth, we take our breakfast. If we are married, we take the kids to school, we get to work, we go on our daily shuttle, work on it, come to the house, or pick the kids, come to the house, have dinner or go to church, have dinner, come home, sleep, and then we've been doing this for so many years. Folks, nothing is going to happen. There is no miracle that is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen. And a life lived like this is on autopilot. And when you put your life on autopilot, or your business on autopilot, you will auto crash. So I just profit some, I'll share these slides with you, some uh, processes and strategies that can help. The first thing is to clarify and define the problem. Please, the problem is just identify anything in, in the environment that Society needs, that is the problem. Anything society needs is a problem. Anything a society needs is a business problem. And a business problem, when solved, will bring profit. So you really need to see. So these ladies, lady that, that converted the tie to identify a problem. He's, she saw that these ties are being wasted around. 
and they are throwing and then burning them. Can't we use it for something? The guy who saw the plastics being disposed of, and it's very difficult to dispose of plastics because it, it doesn't dissolve, okay? It's very difficult. So they were able to now realign and then look at that problem of dealing with the waste, but in a manner that also generates what profit. So they turn it to something else, recycle. At that time, no one has ever thought of it. I don't think that we thought that the guy had, had a PhD or something before he was able to come out with this idea. The lady, <coughs> sorry, the lady we spoke about, this lady, I don't think has even a degree. So if those who are uneducated or have, are not able to, I mean, educate themselves to your level, be able to use the brain to do this, then we have, we have a question to answer. Because these guys are not educated as we are. So when you have done that, you gather and evaluate the information. And here to tell you, you need some tools to do that. You analyze and break down the complex, complex problem. You evaluate the assumptions and biases in it. Apply logical reasoning and generate the, 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 the and, and evaluate what alternatives, make informed decision. And then when you are done, you do reflective what? Learning. And this is a whole dossier that I normally take senior managers through. Now, one of the things that has been a challenge for us is that we have not been trained how to think. Thinking is an art. We have the resource, but we are unable to think. Thinkers rule the world. A thinker cannot be poor because once the brain is used for that activity, all that will, whatever will come out will be something that will address a specific issue or come up with something new. In the past two months, artificial intelligence is shaking every aspect of our lives. And I was just sharing today with one of the guys that very soon, there will be AI supervisors. So the PAD holders who are thinking that they find themselves in a comfortable manner, uh, uh, area, they should be very careful. I said this at a conference that I attended, that you guys should sit down. There will be, and these guys will be able to do, the, the, the AI supervisor will be able to do the work with that speed. So the, 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 the extent or the level of disruption in our environment is big. I want to skip this one about Einstein, Einstein and the others. But I want us to do this last thing. And let's do this together. Okay. <clears throat> So you can, whilst you're on the, on, the, on the platform, you can decide to close your eyes as I read this. I want to take your mind somewhere. Now, in the depth of the mind lies a forest. Lush and vibrant, where the power of critical thinking comes to life. As you wander through the trees, you encounter a cool, crystal clear flowing, stream flowing gently. The sound of birds singing fills the air. A symphony of thoughts and ideas. Each step you take in this forest is guided by the power of your mind. As you navigate the complex terrain of challenges and opportunities, suddenly 
you found yourself in the forest into a deep valley with a Graceland river snaking through its heart. You find yourself soaring high above like an eagle in flight, witnessing the vastness of possibilities that lies ahead. As you glide through the air, your mind carries you even farther to a barren desert where the mind whispers secret of resilience and adaptability. In this barren land where human footprints are scarce. But the journey doesn't end there. Your mind plucks beneath the surface, descending into the depth of the sea. You find yourself under the sea, and you delve into the ocean depths. You encounter the unknown, the, challenge, the challenges that lie hidden beneath the waves. The biggest fish you have ever seen emerges from the darkness, chasing you with relentless determination. But here, in this underwater realm, your mind becomes your shield and spear, weaving strategies and solutions to our smarts, the formidable foe. So you can now open your eyes. <clears throat> now, what I just did was just to let you know the power of imagination. So I imagined this thing myself. I wrote it. And I can see how powerful the mind can be. So we need to learn how to think. And what I, I prescribe for you that is that when you wake up in the morning, the hours between either 4 or 5 or 3.30 to 4, empty your mind. Take off. When you start, it, it will be a little bit difficult. And that's just the power of meditation. Empty your mind. And guys, it will amaze you that as you keep doing allotting 30 minutes every day to think, you would realize that your day will be ordered. There will be new ideas that will come into your mind because the mind is that powerful. If the aeroplane was created by one person who through imagination was able to do it, if drones were created today, you don't need to go to war with aircraft, drones can solve the problem. You can send a drone some 10,000 kilometers and it can go and execute that. Somebody sat down, defied the odd, and began to think in that manner. So you have the resource. And the resource is your mind. And you have no excuse. We all don't have any excuse to say we don't have the brain because we all have the brain and we've all been created in the image of God. So don't put your life on autopilot. You have the greatest resource that God has given to us all. Let's exercise it. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Great presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. David King Boysen, for that wonderful presentation. Indeed, my mind is jumping here and there. And it is it is amazing to know that in critical thinking there is nothing like a mistake. And so we are free to think critically. Um Thank you for this wonderful talk or lecture. And I believe um, as we reflect on this, we shall indeed begin to expose our minds to critical thinking 
and to find new ways to think our businesses in order to survive in this challenging um, market. Thank you so much, Dr. Boise. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to um, welcome the Dean of Student, Robert Mensah, if he's here. Mr. Robert Mensah, you are, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm here. Um, as well, if the VC is here, I would like to extend a warm welcome to, to the VC. VC, if you are here. I want to be Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, um, it's time for our question and answer session. And to lead or to coordinate this session, I would like to invite Mr. Jato to lead us in the question and answering session. Mr. Jato, you have the time, please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. MC. And good evening to everybody. Um, it has been a very you know, insightful uh, lecture. I should see um, our current interim president, Dr. David King Boysen, has done justice to the topic, critical thinking for businesses. And I have learned a lot from this. I hope every, everybody has also you know, done seen. If for nothing at all, I've learned that as humans, we exist to solve problems. And problem, problem solving started from Adam. When Adam and Eve were created, there were nothing like clothing for them. But you know, they started something and we have evolved over the years. Now we can talk on phone, we can, you know, uh, travel from one place to the other, from bicycle to uh, motorcycle to vehicle to aeroplane and all of that. So people were actually solving problems of society. So uh, today we've learned that we have to exist to solve problems. And as we solve problems, we also make world for ourselves. So, yes, so um, I'll open the floor now for questions, you know, to be asked. We've all listened, and I believe we've picked one thing or the other. So you will first introduce yourself if you want to speak. Please just mention your name and probably whether you are an alumni, you know, member or not, then you can ask your question. So the floor is open, please. Your questions. Hello. Okay. So yes. Um. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jato, so I think I raised my hand. Um, you know, to 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 be able to have a more um coordinated uh, question and answer session, I think that individuals should be made to raise their hands so that okay. you allow them to, to to speak. Yes. Yeah. So uh, first of all, on that note, I raise my hands first. Um, I need to ask a question. Um. Okay, so my question goes like this. Um, if um, looking at the lecture, um, what it seems to emphasize is that there is a need for people to think outside the box. Uh, people should, um, you know, do all in their power to, um, to defy cultures and um, beliefs and all that the, the, there is to be able to come up with something that can benefit society. And so my question is, if someone finds himself in an organization that he or she is just an employee and there is a culture in the organization 
which the person feels that if he or she is able to change that culture, it's going to help in the advancement of the organization. But then um, there is also the danger that if this uh, innovation should fail or innovative ideas should fail, uh, there are consequences that could even lead to the, the loss of their jobs. Also, if they should succeed, uh, there is also the likelihood that they are going to make enemies in the organization because they will become the uh, some some what, what, what I would say some icons, you know, in the organization at the end of the day, and so that is going to create a lot of enemies for them in the organization. Uh, if people find themselves in such circumstances, how would they be able to apply that concept? That should they think outside the box and solve the problem, or they should continue to you know um uh, just run their shadows as it is that's the question that i want to ask thank you okay thanks so much mr okanja um so we may take a few more in addition to this maybe the first three questions then we can you know let our president address them so um, please, uh, if you want to ask a question, just raise up your hand. OK, I can see some hands up. So uh, yeah, so okay. yes, mm -hmm. Mr. Abraham. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, um, you can speak, please. I, I, I think um, we have uh, most educationists here that can solve some of these issues for us. I, I think, um, uh, Doc, thank you so much. You, you have said it all. Um, my only question is how uh, our educational system can be structured in a, in a way that can seek to address our own problem because I see um, we go to school and most of the uh, things we want to acquire um, are all abstract. Lecturers come and most of the education they seek to give us are all abstract. Yes, uh, so my, my sometimes my, I wonder, my question is, uh, is it possible for us to also begin to be thinking along those lines such that uh, our educational base can uh, can be structured in a way to solve most of our problems for us. All right, thanks so much. Um, so we may take the last one. So that's we. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, my name is Maxwell Agbenega. Okay. I'm not an alumni. All right. Um, please, my question is: um, In what ways? can uh, one's emotions affect critical thinking? And how can we strike a balance between logical reasoning and emotional intelligence? Um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so at this point, we will allow our president to come in to help us. I'll take it um, from uh, Agbenyaga's uh, point. Uh, the relationship between uh, logical thinking and emotional uh, intelligence and how does critical thinking affect uh, emotional, I mean, intelligence. So <clears throat> let me put it in this way. Um, when you have not been trained to think and you are starting for the first time, I had the opportunity to um, to go through this exercise with when I was doing my PhD, I was looking for a mentor. So I saw one guy on a like called Vene, who was a mechanical engineer, read his profile. He was just an amazing guy. So whilst I went to India, I located him. And then he took me through some exercises, gave me some specific books to read. And uh, I have those books I can share with you and told me a lot of things that, David, uh, there are two things that happen. There are those who rule the world and those who are just existing. 
and complying to rules. So if you want to belong to those who rule the world, there is a way that you should do your things. So there was a book called The, uh, the, the Goal by Guthrot that I read, Go One, Go Two. There was another book called The World is Flat that I read, and then um, um, Synchronous Management that I read. I have all those books there. And I'm, so when I went through that, it was then easy for me when we we're going through the exercise of, David, when you wake up early in the morning between four, and between four, I went to his house. I was sleeping in his house between the hours of, he wakes me up 3.30 and he says, stay in your room, empty your mind. The first day it was not easy. But so many thoughts came coming through uh, my mind. And as you said, that emotions were there. So how were, was I able to control it? There will be conflicting thoughts that will be coming to your mind when you start. But if you are <clears throat> consistent with it, you realize that with time, you become, um, it becomes easy for you to now empty your mind and decide not to think about anything. And I can tell you, if you are able to get to that level, uh, uh, Agbanyaga, if you're able to get to th that level, there are some fresh ideas that comes to your mind when your mind is at peace and then you are not thinking about anything. And that is the power that we have as human beings. And we are, our educational system has not helped us to be trained to be thinkers. I'm moving to what Sami Abraham uh, asked. We have not been trained to be thinkers. And I give you an example. In Australia, a lady that I spoke to from Australia said that they don't write exams. Actually, what happens is that they give case studies that really happens to most organizations in Australia. And that's what they bring to the classroom for the guys to solve. So they don't write exams. And this lady is doing her master's. In fact, she lived in around the uh, Medas area, Comte 11, Comte 12. Went to Australia last, last year somewhere in June. And then she was sharing this experience with us. That there is no exam for somebody to say that I was first and I was second. <laughs> so the approach to dealing with issues relates to what the organization does. And so, uh, AB, our problem has been that we don't even, uh, we are not even able to translate the theory that we are studying into practical things. So that becomes an issue for us. Okay. If you ask a lecturer that, okay, the theory of reason actions, Maslow hierarchical of needs. Give me a typical example of how it's able to solve societal problem. They will not be able to tell you. So that becomes a challenge. So over time, when we have this education and we are all aware, then we'll begin to change the discourse. Another example for you, when I started te teaching e-procurement, uh, e-supply chain. The outline they gave for me was for them to be writing. So I told the then um, the HOD that, honestly, if you want me to teach, it's e-procurement, so everything is e. They must really do something on the computer. So it went to Cape, they were saying, I said, I want to engage them. And they accepted. Today, the e-procurement, people are using Google Forms, People are using Skype. People are using, uh, I mean, Facebook Live really to solve problems. They are using Microsoft Visio to solve problems. So we can start. If we start, the discourse will change, okay? And then for my vice um, president, you asked a very difficult question, and that is the reason why people really don't want to go on that tangent to think critical because there is no supporting system 
that helps you to advance that course. Now, Thomas Edison, when he tried <coughs> how to manufacture the bulb and then try at, at 3,000 times, and then he failed 3,000 times, see how he puts it. He said he didn't fail 3,000 times. He rather learned how to do that same thing that he wanted to do that way 3,000 times. And that was powerful. He learned. So in our business, failures are rather opportunities. But they are not as in your field. So I get what you are saying. In this country, somebody employs you to go and work, and then he says, do this, and you go and do the other one, twice. And then even when you succeed, people are going to chase you and all that. That is why we are all here. If we have the knowledge and we are working in an organization and we see that somebody is coming up with ideas and somebody is breaking the, 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 the boundaries, coming out with new things, we should be able to create the environment for the person to be able to function. Because we are losing a lot of critical thinkers because of the hatred that we have for them. Like in Africa, if you're a genius, it's a crime. If you're intelligent, it's a crime. So we need to start that discussion. All right, uh, thanks so much, Doc, for you know, the answers you've you know, uh, provided. Um, we will now move to the next round. round. Of questions, so we will take the next three. Yeah. Okay, so so so, so doc, please just a follow up, Mister Gato. Okay, uh, yes, just uh -huh. a follow up to uh, doc's response. Just a follow up okay. to doc's response. Yes. So um, I think the answer that I was looking out for is that if the person finds himself in such a, such um, a situation, what should the person do? Should the person go ahead yeah. and then use the concept? Of thinking outside the box and take all the necessary risk and go ahead to do what you have been asked to do because you want to you want to change the the culture of doing things so that even if he feels you know he doesn't mind even if he succeeds and he becomes a hero and he said that he doesn't mind and that gives another opportunity you know uh, especially when maybe his efforts can be recognized somewhere and he will have some opportunities that are bigger than where he is. So should a person take the risk and do something otherwise, which he feel that that will maximize the, the value of the firm, you know, than what he has been assigned to do. So that was not given. Whether the person yeah. should still go ahead or the person should just stay in there. Yeah, boss, uh, Bryce, you see, uh, even, even though not doing, not doing, not going on that tangent, Okay, not doing anything. Not doing anything is also a risk in itself. I will advise that if you find yourself in such circumstance, and there have been a number of examples, I have shown you those few people who were able to do uh, some of these things. The other, what you have said, you can go ahead to do, but you don't have people who have that uh, training to be able to survive within that environment. There are some who, when they hit them, they will not come back. So that's why I'm saying that once we are telling those people to go ahead with their decision, because when they succeed, there is more to gain than more, even if they, they don't succeed, there's more to gain than to lose because they can move on Okay, they cannot be stuck with that company. But those of us who are within the environment should create the environment for creative thinkers, for those who would want to think critically. Other than that, we will become who we are as a country. There will be no innovation, nothing will happen. We only have to uh, uh, I mean, import the knowledge. I just recently uh, uh, had that one of the guys 
uh, Agua or something develop artificial intelligence tool that is able to help farmers do something, what an award in Dubai and had about $600,000, okay? These are, I mean, young guys who have had the opportunity to do that, assuming that that guy was in a company and wanted to do that. They would have said that, hey, but he decided probably to continue with what he's doing because once you have the results, those who were the naysayers will, 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 will come and then, I mean, even congratulate you for having that, that determination to be able to go that far. So go ahead and do what you're doing. Because if you don't do it in a way, I mean, <laughs> you will not gain anything out of it. It's better you try than not to do anything. All right. So it's better you try than not to do anything. So let's, you know, the door from others to also, you know, comments. My name is Nana Jibo. Okay, Nana, uh, please go ahead. Uh -huh. And I urge you to be, you know, snappy. Because I think time yeah, is also running. Yeah, 2014. Okay. Tema. Dear Dr. Diabano, yeah. But me he said, it's hard time. Ah, you better consider your local languages. And your ma, be a person, you better your local language. The local language, we are Obiaka, we are better. Yeah, she said, I drew breath, she said, she to me, dear, dear, she said, the China for, or me, she said, the doctor, I can say, thank you, local language. If you say, thank you, then you need to be brave. I'm on my contribution. She said, on my example, she said, on my Kuto example, no. And you put on your uncle's school, that crown. Obe to me, or to me, be kind, baby, or be to me, be here, baby, I feel, be adapted to it. And it is hard time, say. The local language you consider. Yeah, the, the doctor or you know local language. I'm feeling kadebwa. Thank you very much. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah, that's it. We thank you so much. Um, please, uh, one more before we hand over the mic to Doctor. Yes, please just mention your name and go ahead. If there is none, then we can hand over the mic right back to Doc to address. Oh, hello. Yes, uh -huh, yeah, please go ahead. Mention your name, please. Okay, my name is Francis um, Ataune. Okay. I want to find out at what stage can we get the people to have this critical thinking? We start from, from let's say, KG to the university, master's, PhD, whatever. At what stage do we start building our people? to have this critical thinking, to do something for themselves. Thank you very much. OK, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Um, I think we have the last one. So we can go back to Doc. The last question, please, for this session. So I, I can go ahead. OK, yes, Doc, please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead, Doc. Um, what, what Pope Francis said is a serious issue. Uh, Augustina, her hand is also up. Uh, Mr. Zato, do you want to take that one? Um, yeah, please, let's, let, let's you know, uh, finish this one. Then we can probably open the last, you know, uh, so, so. Ideally, this should have some uh, connection to our educational system. I mean, the syllabus and all that. Unfortunately, the last Hello. time a consultant uh, reached out to me, I saw our educational system, uh, which is uh, syllabus, which is below, I think, up to primary five or or primary six, and um, it was very disturbing. It was extremely disturbing. I don't know what the problem is, but 
Now in Ireland, like I said, I gave the example for Australia. They do not write exams. They have moved into talent development. They have moved into creating environment for the, the kids to innovate. But we are still uh, lagging behind with some of these things. So what we can do is some of this education that we have started. So what I do is even in most organizations when I'm asked to do training, one of the things I do is I treat this thing as a dossier. And then you, you realize that when you have treated it, it's now sparked some sort of discussion and then they will request that you do a full presentation on that. So that awareness of um, creation, if we continue that we have had this, we have to start from somewhere. Our system um, is actually not designed to make us thinkers. So if you have kids in the house, you would have to start imbibing these things in them. There are tools that I can, I can share. And I do that with my kids. I allow them to think. And I do that exercise with, I allow them to think. So for instance, my firstborn is at uh, Ebri Girls, but then at uh, 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 what, form two, she already knows how to sew. She sewed a dress for me because from the school, we go to a fashion, when she comes home, she goes, a fashion, uh, I mean, uh, training center to do that. So someone also goes to beat and I allow them to come out with their creative uh, uh, kind of that, that talent in them. So we can all start that. Other than that, we are only training kids and uh, to be unemployed. All right, you know, thanks so much. Uh, so I think we will take the last round of questions. Then we can move on with the rest of the uh, lineup. So the last round, please. If there are any more questions, please feel free to ask. The last round, please. Any more questions? Just mention your name and go ahead. Um, hello. Good, okay, yes. good evening. Uh, yeah, good evening. Okay, um, so this is Mark, um, the current SRC president for Thema Campus. Um, my question is, um, this is a very engaging um, session. And, um, you know, culturally, we are oriented not to be thinkers. And because we are also colonized over the past, to be dependent on on most mostly our slave masters, it's it's a bit challenging for 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 the system to depart from. Uh, I mean, what we know as a status quo, as in you go to work and they tell you to do something, and you have to just like there's a, a step by step way of doing whatever it is. So if you go outside it, then you are seen as either being thrown or something else. So you know, it's it, we need to now work on our cultural orientation. So there has to be a reorientation of the mind, like Doc is saying, I mean, the critical thinking. Before we can even get there, then it means that for the, for, I mean, the foundation, we need to have a real critical, I mean, a reorientation of who the Ghanaian is, what is there for the person to do and all that. And for me, I would, right now, what I can say is that he's muddy the water. I mean, it's a set people thinking. I'm hoping that this will be a first of in a series of uh, programs to come that some of us can also uh, benefit from to also engage others to even uh, also uh, participate subsequently. Because I think that we don't need to exit school before we get to know some of these things. At least while from school, if these things are made known to us and we start engaging, I'm sure by the time the person is leaving, the person is uh, fully awake to be able to undertake all the tasks that is ahead of them. So I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity and I'm looking forward for more uh, of such engagements. Okay, Th thanks so much, Brother Mark. Um, please, any more? Yes, okay, hello. Yes, uh -huh, yes. Please go ahead. Yes, my Your name. Um, I'm Augustina, the Tema, uh, graduate from Tema Campus 2020. 
procurement student. Um, my own, my what uh, doctor is saying uh, yeah. is very true, and I really love all the things that he's saying. My only challenge here is that we are living in a community where, as especially as a lady, when you try to think outside the walls and you try to express yourself, you are targeted as a disrespectful person. And sometimes you, you sit down and you think like, everybody don't like you. As a sample happened when I was in campus and even in my current office, during the COVID era, I was able to, um, because of the help of doctor, I was able to develop a process flow for my company. And I was able to identify a lot of challenges that a company was facing. And at the end of the day, the company used it and it was working. The unfortunate aspect is 10 people went home as a redundancy because of the process flow. And you can imagine the hatred and the things you'll be going through in the office because you just came, you brought your ideas and people are now uh, on redundancy. And sometimes it makes you feel uncomfortable in the environment you find yourself. So what should we do when we find ourselves in such situation because we think outside the box? Even though it's helpful to the company, people will come after you. Thank you. That's my question. Right. So what should we do when we find ourselves yeah. in such environment? OK, thanks so much. I'm sure your question will be addressed soon. Um, please, the last one. The last good question, evening. please. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Akins. Uh, I'm 2021 uh, past student. Doctor. OK, please go ahead. Thank you for the presentation, as usual. It was a great one. Uh, my question is, most of the time, as thinkers, as in day by, the day goes by, ideas pop up in your mind and you think of how to execute them. But the one number one challenge that comes is the fear of failure. Some people are in such positions where they just can't fail once or twice. Either they will be demoralized or they would not have enough resources to embark on such, I would say, hypothesis, trying to see if this idea will shoot, you know, what challenges will come. So, uh, Doctor, how do we get across this fear of failure so that we can push on? I know those who were able to achieve great things didn't stop at once or twice or maybe, like you said, 300 times failure. But... Some of us, we can right, afford right, to feel that, that long. Thank you. OK, your question is clear. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm sure uh, we, we should end it here with the questions. So we will yeah. invite Doc to address them. Yeah, that, that is, that is um, Juan Pablo. OK, so um, we, we can give her the chance then. Then I'll be the yeah. last one, yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Boyson. Hey, my name is Juan Pablo, a level 300 student. Okay, as a university university lecturer, how, how, which are the measures that the university can put in place to help students to think critically? Thank you. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> first of all, um, in fact, our, lect our lecturers, they need training, all right? We need to train our lecturers. Aside that, the lecturers themselves also need personal development. Now, <clears throat> what is happening within the Industry 4.0 I mean, space where there's going to be very serious disruption? Um, of the environment due to artificial intelligence, big data analytics, blockchain, et cetera, internet of things. Lecturers should be fast enough to be able to adapt. So for instance, now the normal procurement that we are doing is actually not what that we'll be doing in the future, the way we source 
it's going to be different because now we those doing procurement you go look for catalog and all that now an ai can just do the sourcing for you those in finance jato the financial uh, statements that you prepare those to account yes. and you, you do the analysis the ai can step yes. through and tell you what to do so we will not need i mean financial aspect as it is. So we need to get into the space and begin to take charge of some of these things. So <clears throat> lecturers must do that. I have in my department where I, I, I am the head of the department, I've started doing data analytics. I'm in training with them using big data and advanced Excel. The first section is coming on because we are now modeling uh, some programs that are not the conventional one. In fact, unfortunately, those of us who are going through this old syllabus, it will be difficult to connect to industry now. It means that we need to do uh, more. And of course, it, was, it is because of that, that uh, the executive thought that we have to start some of these things so that we build capacity for ourselves, as my, my, my vice I mean, indicated. My other uh, colleague was talking about failure. Um, let's look at failure this way. Okay. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger said that uh, when he fails, he sees the failure as a point of learning something new that he probably have, haven't learned. So he is more interested in failing more to create more opportunities to learn rather than always succeeding. So the more he fails, the more he learns. The more he fails, the more innovative he becomes. So the problem is that failure in itself, we've been told that when we fail, we'll not be able to, uh, it means that failure is the bad thing. You know Professor Alote. Professor Alote is dead. Okay, of uh, pleasant memory. He became one of the uh, best physicists. Uh, Alote constant, if you remember, that helped us to go to space. But he didn't make the level hundred threshold. He failed, but his rebound led to the success. So go ahead and fail. Go ahead and fail. No strings attached. Make the mistakes because it's out of the learning that we get the experience. Uh, and what should we do when? We are found in that environment, that environment where, and the lady who just said that, uh, I think it was Microsoft Visio we, we, we use in class, right? And yes. you, you used to, yes. yeah, you use that to transform something in the organization. Anyway, that was going to happen anyway if you didn't do it. Someone would have done it, all right? So the fact that you applied that, and guys, look at this all. With all the things I, 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 I taught in class, the, 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 the visual that was not in the syllabus is what brought the transformation in the organization. Can you imagine? It, is, it was what was not in the So when I'm teaching, somebody asked that question. When I'm teaching, the, I'm the, the SRC president, when I'm teaching, anyone I've taught before, you know I do this. I will... I will deal with the syllabus and I'll tell you guys that this one is not for the classroom, it's for industry. So that I connect you to industry. And I do that most of the time. And I think I'm glad that they're having a testimony here that this has helped. Guys, I'm done. But what I'm saying is that there, is, there shouldn't be any fear of failing. Life is a lesson, it's a school. 
Those who have failed more are the very people who are at the top. If your failure is not more, if you have failed two or three times, and because of that, you are afraid and you want to back out, then you are not going to succeed. If it's those who have failed so many times, they have been able to reach the top. So let's go ahead and fail. Let's make the mistakes. And then let's learn from them. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks so much, uh, you know, Doc, for doing justice to all the questions. Um, I know we have a lot more questions to ask, but we have to, you know, end it somewhere. So maybe some other time we may have more opportunity to ask a lot more questions. So I'll hand over the mic back to the MC to continue from here. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so grateful to um, Mr. Jato for conducting the question and answering section. I think it has been wonderful. And thanks to all you that asked those insightful, thoughtful questions. Thanks, Doc, for those wonderful answers. I have been edified. I think I will proceed forth without fear to think critically. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we shall invite our vice president to give us the closing remarks. After he is done, we shall have Mr. Jato come again to give us some few announcements. Thank you so much for joining in this program. We hope when others are organized willingly, we shall invite our friends all to join to that we go in these lectures. Thank you. Mr. Vice President, you can please give us a closing remark. Thank you very much, uh, MC. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, Dr. Boysin for availing himself for this lecture. And I also want to thank all the participants of this program. I think it's been very impressive. Um, uh, I was counting the, the, the number of entries that we had, and um, it got to about 90. Um, and so I think, um, in, in fact, people have seen the such lecture series and um, uh, we, we have the hope that, you know, a time to come, we will have a number even greater than this. Because I remember the, the first um, meeting we had, which is to meet the alumni and, and do some introductions. Um, the attendance was very low. And, but today, I'm so surprised that we have as high as 90 people, you know, entering the, um, the, the call. And, and so I think this is very impressive. And I want to thank everyone for uh, making time after their busy, busy schedules to be part of this program. Um, I think this evening, we have learned a lot. And um, we have to apply what we have learned. Um, there's always a saying that uh, when you acquire knowledge and you don't put that knowledge into use, then that knowledge you have acquired is a waste. That is what most of us do. We buy books, we listen to audios, you know, and we listen to motivational uh, speeches. But then when it comes to the application, that is where we have a problem. Uh, we are not willing to apply what that, whatever that we have learned. But it is my hope that whatever we have learned, we will be able to apply it. Um, the concept of thinking outside the box is very important. Uh, and I think that when that is taken seriously, it's going to change um, a whole lot of things around us. Uh, it's going to change a whole lot of things in academia. Um, for example, um, you have a practice where um, something that has been like a status quo, uh, anytime students enter into the university, the first thing they start to look out for is uh, past questions to buy. And you have people also that have turned themselves into contractors that goes around to sell past questions. And, um, and wh what, why do they do this? This is also followed by lecturers who just 
in the first week of their lectures, they announced the class that they are going to conduct uh, an interim uh, assessment exams. So the question is, you ask yourself that what have you thought that you are going to assess the students on? And so this gives the students some, you know, um, uh, ideas that the moment you enter into university, start looking for past questions to buy. You know, start looking for past of thinkers and the past to do things differently. You know than what others are doing as lecturers, as students. Um, I will want to also draw attention to something that's very very important. Um, you see, uh, I keep saying in scripture, I keep saying that God could have just, um, in, you know, after creating the word, the, the world, He could have just invented everything that, that human beings would need. And when that is done, it means that humans will not need anything again. Everything that we need has already been provided for. So we just be comfortable and then enjoy them. So for example, when the world was created and God created cars, he created uh, aircraft, he creates, he creates telephone, and then he creates any other thing that we need, machines, you know, name it. Uh, you know, uh, do you think that humans will be able to explore that there is something that they can also do using the mind that God has given to them or using the brain God has given to them. If God has already created everything, you know, that will not help us to be able to explore and do other things. But because um, God himself wants us to think outside the box, he provides certain things as a startup that we are supposed to build on. So you can see clearly that when, um, you know, uh, we we learned that God wanted to destroy the, the world in the time of Noah. He asked Noah to build an ark. Now somebody could, who asked a question, but why didn't God himself uh, command an ark to, to come into an existence and then just tell Noah and his people to go in? Because if he is able to create the world, then he should be able to create a ship that will you know, carry the, the people and save them from the flood. But he said, you, you know what should apply his mind and build this. And today, what benefit has been, have we derived, derived out of it? You know, this concept or this uh, innovation has been able to save families, you know. Apart from that, humans that came after us were able to learn that there is a possibility of creating what we can call a ship that can move people from one place to another. And that can also help us in transporting goods from one place to another. And so if everything was done for Noah, there was no way humans that came after us would see that you can create something that can be on water to move and deliver people and then send people from one place to another and also send goods across. But I think that the ability that the human mind possess, you know, is something that we have to harness it and then be able to use it to, for our advantage. And so um, let us take this lesson seriously, and then let us have new ways of doing things. As we go back, we should, as Doc said, let us just free our minds, and then let ideas flow in. Once idea flows in, let us be able to look at how we can utilize these ideas to our profit. So I thank all of you. And then we'll look forward to seeing you in the next lecture series again. Thank you very much. Yeah, so MC, over, over to you again. Okay, so Mr. Jackson, um it's now a time for announcements if they are in all right so um all too soon we've come to the end of the program and before we draw the curtain on today's program a few announcements please um so as we uh build the practice of the association uh we need to uh, put together a few committees to, you know, help steer the affairs of the association. So um, we are encouraging you to avail yourselves 
you know, so that we can appoint some of our members into some of these committees that I'm going to mention. So the first one has to do with uh, publicity, publicity committee. Uh, we have welfare committee, we have fundraising committee, and then organizing committee. So um, we believe you will readily you know, make yourself available so that we can fill some of these spaces to help build the practice of the alumni as we move forward. Um, the next one has to do with the 2023 you know, itinerary or program lineup to the rest of the programs for the rest of the year. I just want to uh, outline them so that we know that these are the programs we have ahead of us for the rest of the year. So the first one is Alumni Virtual Business Lecture Series, number one, or first, first, which is what we just had today. So that is out of the picture now. Then followed by this, we have first general meeting uh, to happen in Dansuman. It's on the 3rd of June, 2023. We'll be putting the details on the platform. So if you don't get it, just don't worry. The details will be coming. Followed by that, we have first general meeting for Tema, also happening on the 10th of June, 2023. Then next, we have Alumni Virtual Business Lecture Series uh, number two. That is happening on the 12th of August, 2023. Then we have the Ansoman District Election, Ansoman District Executive Elections, rather. So uh, this is a big one. So I believe, once again, we will build ourselves so that we can fill the positions that will come up for the Ansoman District Executive Election. It's happening on the 2nd of September, 2023. We have Tema District executive elections also happening on the 9th of September, 2023. Then we have alumni or annual alumni homecoming games. That is also a big one happening on the 21st, 21st of September, 2023. Then we have the national executive elections, which is going to happen on the 28th of October, 2023. Then the last one has to do with uh, alumni or slash continuing students street carnival is happening at Tema in December 2023 this year. So these are the few announcements we have for you. Thank you so much. Over to our MC. Thank you. Um, wonderful announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, all too soon we come to the end of this lecture series. Uh, we thank all those who participated. We hope that for the next lecture series that will be announced and planned, we so prepare as we can to join in the program. We have a blessed weekend. Thank you all for joining.